Oliver had been to the works to be mended. Some troublesome cars tricked him, and the Great Western Engine fell into the turntable well. Now Oliver was as good as new, but he was still worried about cars. I'd rather not use them, he puffed to himself. But the cars sang songs rude and loud. Scruffy, their leader, led the chorus. Oliver's no use at all, thinks he's very clever, says that he can manage us, that's the best joke ever. When he orders us about with the greatest folly, we just push him down the well. Pop goes old Ollie. Thomas, Duck, and Percy were shocked. Be quiet, they ordered. But they couldn't be everywhere, and everywhere they weren't, the cars began again. Oliver's no use at all, thinks he's very clever, says that he can manage us, that's the best joke ever. At last the engines gave up. We're sorry, Oliver, they said. It's really my fault, said Oliver sadly. I shouldn't have fallen in the turntable well. Toad, the brake van, felt sorry for Oliver too. Next morning, he spoke to Douglas. I'm worried, Mr. Douglas. This disrespect for engines. Where is it going to end? Who knows, sighed Douglas. I've got a plan, Mr. Douglas. May I stay here today and help Mr. Oliver? We are both Great Western and must stand together. Certainly, Toad, replied Douglas and puffed away. Soon, Toad was explaining his plan. Goodness gracious, Toad, I don't think you should suggest such a thing to Oliver. But Oliver interrupted. No, Duck, Toad's right. It's really my fault. I must put this trouble right. I meant no disrespect, you understand. Of course not, Toad. Anyway, Driver says the same, and he's arranged it with the station master. Very well, Oliver, conceded Duck. But I must hurry. My passengers will be waiting. Good luck. So long, smiled Oliver bravely, but he felt dreadfully nervous inside. Oliver marshaled the worst cars two by two. That's the way, Mr. Oliver, whispered Toad. And if you leave that scruffy to last, then you'll have him behind you, and you can bump him if he starts his nonsense. Hold back, hold back, whispered Scruffy, and pass the word to the others. The silly cars giggled. But Oliver knew what to do. There was plenty of sand on the rails and his wheels gripped splendidly. He gave a great heave. <gasps> groaned Scruffy. I don't like this. Go on, yelled Duff. Well done, boy, well done. Oh! Well, Scruffy. Yeah! I'm coming apart! And he did. Then there was trouble. Well, Oliver, so you don't know your own strength, is that it? N no, no, sir, said, said Oliver nervously. So Topham had inspected Scruffy. As I thought. Rotten wood, rusty frames. Maybe if we put you back together, you'll earn yourself a better name. Nowadays, Oliver only takes the cars when the other engines are busy. But they're always quick to warn each other. Take care with Mr. Oliver. If you play tricks on him, you'll never be the same car again. Scruffy has learned his lesson and says nothing at all.